Hi and welcome to another video. Today let's have a look at to change notifier. I have noticed that many people come to projects, they are new to software engineering most probably, and there is already some architecture set up, for example with the provider package. And then the provider package, it provides some kind of an object. And this object could be for example change notifiers. However, people usually don't know how the change notifier works itself, they just use the API provided. So I think it would be interesting to look a little bit into change notifier and similar concept today. Before we start with the Dart code, let's quickly go to Wikipedia over here, where we have the observer pattern. Because change notifier, similarly to streams, to RX, is an implementation of an observer pattern. And Wikipedia says you here that an observer pattern is a software design pattern in which an object named a subject maintains a list of dependencies called observers and when there is a change in its state, then it notifies automatically all of the observers. Now if we scroll down over here, we have this beautiful UML diagram. So you can see we have this observer interface here, which is then implemented by some concrete observers. An observer has just one method, which is an update. And then we have subjects. So a subject has a list of observers over here, and then it can register one of the observers, so add it to a list and register, remove from a list and notify it, where notifying is nothing more than going through the list of observers and calling update on all of them. To understand it better, think of a situation when you are in a forest and you went for bird watching. Let's say that there are three people bird watching and there is some super awesome parrot that you are looking at. So all three of you are observers right now and the parrot is a subject that you are observing. And the subject can notify you that it is there by simply making some noise. So if the parrot makes noise, then it notifies all observers around it that it's there and then observers can watch it, can, can look at it and notice that it is there. So in our case, you are the observer over here and the parrot is a subject. And when it makes a noise, it basically calls notify observers on all observers around it. Now, going back to change notifier, we can have a look that they give you a little bit of introduction and also about the complexity of adding listeners and removing them, where listeners now is what is called an observer. So an observer is a listener is just instead of observing and listening. I think the bird example it works even better here because you're listening for the birds rather than observing them in this case. Also, here you have some examples that I highly encourage you to look into later, where they show you how we can use the change and value notifiers with an animation builder and how animated, sorry, animated builder can be used to just re-render part of the screen and not necessarily for an animation. Now the API down here, the change notifier, it implements a listenable. If we have a look at listenable, you can see that they list you a couple of things that are implemented in listenable. And also here we have a couple of methods. So as you've seen in the observer pattern, we have the add listeners, remove listeners over here. If we look into this um, change notifier now, documentation, then we have a couple of um, elements like controllers and stuff that are implementing this. Between others, we have the value notifier over here, which we'll look into. And of course, you can see that it has properties like you can check if it has any listeners, um, you can add the listener, you can dispose it, and then you can also call notify listeners. Just notice that the notify listeners method is protected, it's visible for testing, um, so it's actually supposed to be used with something else. And then if we have a look into a value listener, so it's basically a type, a special type of a change listener that holds a single value. And then you can see that it inherits different methods and properties. It basically adds this value property over here. Now let's have a look into the actual implementation. So we are in the Flutter Flutter repository and you can see it's implemented at Flutter packages, Flutter lib source foundations, and then we have change notifier to Dart. Now, first of all, in this file, we have implemented this abstract class listenable. So anything that is using it, it's taking it out of here. And you can see it's just an interface. It doesn't have any implementation. And then we have add listener and we have the remove listener. And you can also see that it says here that an object that maintains a list of listeners. So that's what's a listenable. The listeners are typically used to notify clients that the object has been updated. So think of the listener or listenable here as the subject. So if you look back here, subject is a listenable. And in this nomenclature over here in Dart, observer is a client. And then let's be back here. Let's skip the docs. And down below, you can see we have the value 
listenable and this is also an interface right now so the value notifier it also has its own abstract class which defines this value getter over here and then finally we have our change notifier you can see here the same docs that we've seen before it's implementing a listenable and then also it, it keeps a count of all listenables that it has and finally if we scroll down for example to has listeners so we can see it just returns you whether the counter is higher than zero then that means we have some listeners then we have this add listener method then here we have the remove listeners um, public API we have also this pose implemented and all that stuff this finally down here we also have the value notifier which extends its uh, change notifier implements the value listenable that we've seen before and you provided a type that you wanted to hold so it can hold any type it's a generic type over here and down here you can see we have just this implementation of a value so we have some private type private to this file which is of type t and then we have this getter where we can get this type and we also have a setter to just set this type and notice now the important thing every time you set the value then in the end this notify listeners will be called let's go to dartpad for a moment i have a very simple dart application or flutter application over here without much of a ui as you can see and we have account is zero text and then we have a click me if we click on it then we count up I have my final notifier defined in state over here and it doesn't have to be here we could pass it at, as an argument we could also take it out of the class and put it on top level over here so we can have that let's run it there we go it took much longer than I would like but we have our counter and you can see it will still work so it, it doesn't matter where this value notifier comes from but what is important is that we have this init state and on init state we add a listener to this notifier and the listener is nothing more than a void callback and inside this void callback we can call for example a set state and then we can set a new value to our count value over here which later gets printed in this text down here we actually don't need this stuff over here and then we have this button and on this button we can call notifier.value plus plus and then this will call this notify observers so again this calls notify observers the value was changed by one so then this observer over here gets called and inside it in, in set state it sets the new value of account we don't have to have this value that count over here we don't need to do that we could just call it an empty set state over here and we can call notifier the value down here let's run it here we go and it will still work just instead of having a state inside of this we can have just a value taken directly from a notifier we could potentially use a change notifier over here instead of a value notifier now a change notifier doesn't have a value so we cannot instantiate it with an int and a default value like before what we can also do is we can call this add notifier on it we can call a state now we need to have again our state let's start with zero again then in set state we can count plus plus so we can increment our state inside here and then over here of course we cannot call the notifier that value because it doesn't exist we don't increment it on the button over here but what we can do over here is just call ourselves notify listeners now notice that I get an information over here because as this notify listeners method it's protected and visible for testing so we are not supposed to use it directly we could extend the change notifier and make our own class and then inside of our own class we could call this notify listeners which would be okay let's run it there we go we have our count is zero and if we click me we still count up so what happens now is the same thing just instead of a value notifier which was holding a value for us but instead we have to hold this value ourselves right now and then so when something happened when we are notified of a change then we have to do something with the value and then finally let's just uh, add a couple more listeners so let's say we have instead of one listener three listeners let's run it and now if we count you can see that we jump 
directly to free. Because when this notify listeners was called, then it was called on all these listeners that were added to this notifier. And then each of these listeners separately is adding one to the counts. I hope this short video helps you understand how the change notifier, value notifier, but also any kind of other observer that you may have works. So whether it's a stream, it's a very simple, similar concept. If you have a stream, then you are listening to a stream, you have an observer and you have a subject, and then this subject changes, and then you can observe to these changes with whatever you are listening with. But for now, I called you to death, and this is enough for this video. I see you next time. Bye bye.